We're going to animate a bolt of lightning. Bolt is just another word for clamp, which is just a tenuous link to show how we're going to constrain, clamp, and restrict values animated in layout. We'll begin by creating a null. Let's call it master. Basically, this null will be controlling everything. One on the keypad, let's nudge it to the side a little bit. M for motion options. Under control and limits, we're going to limit the position of the Y to 0 to 1. So that's the first demo of clamping out of the way. I'm going to leave the boring old theory evaluation order chat to the end. Hopefully it'll help you understand why I'm rigging it this way. So skip ahead if you're interested in that. <laughs> but for now, let's get to it. I've loaded up my fork of lightning model, which is really nothing special. It's just a single mesh. The first thing I'm going to do is change the pivot point because it's down here and I want it up here. So I'm going to go over to modify move pivot and I'm just going to pick it up and drag it to the top. Okay, so M for motion options, controller and limits. I'm going to map this scaling to this null here. So I'm going to go to the scale tab. The scale item, I am going to point that to the master null here. And for the scale control, I want same as item, same as item, and same as item for X, Y, and Z. But I want to take the Y position of this master, so I'm going to follow the Y position. And you'll see it's disappeared. That's because we're at zero here. So now whenever this is one, this will be scaled to one and vice versa. Now visually it's sort of backwards, but it makes more sense in the long run. Select our master null and let's open up the graph editor. We'll be clamping the value of this null within the graph editor. And we're going to be using modifiers to do this. So to make sure we're seeing those on display, make sure the show modifier option is ticked on. We're just going to be dealing with the Y position. So select that and press X on the keyboard to solo. In fact, I might turn off the X and Z so we don't nudge those about. Here we go. Under the add modifier, we have a noisy channel, which is all very nice, but there's no clamping. So we can't use that. Now, if you have a copy of OD tools that has OD clamper, that sounds great, but I think that's pretty much uh, end of life now. So we can't use that, which means we're going to have to build our own, which fortunately is a lot easier than you might think. What are we left with? Add modifier. Let's add a texture channel. Let's click on texture layer type. We want a procedural texture and we're just going to stick with turbulence. The texture value I want at one. So as you can see, we're above one here, but let's not worry too much about that. We might add a bit more contrast. And this is where we play with the scale. So we might want it slightly, slightly more peaks and troughs. That's up to you. Now we're using the X axis here. If I was to go to Y, it would be using that axis. So you can play around with different scales. Next step, really straightforward. Let's go to add layer and we want a gradient and we want this left at previous layer. Now in the start position, we want a value of zero. And in this end position, we want a value of one. The smoothing type we will set to linear. So that should be an exact replica of what's going on here. Now you'll see we're between one and two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight that keyframe and I'm going to make it a value of zero. So now everything is mapped between zero and one. And quite simply, the way we're going to clamp this is we're going to take this value here and we're going to smoothing type of stepped. So now we have a value of either zero or one. And we can use this little slider as a threshold for the turbulence that's underneath it. So that's nice, but let's customize this slightly. So there's a bit of jitter at this top end. So we've got this. I'm going to add another key at the end, which will also be white, but this key will be set to linear. And then this key, keeping it as stepped, will take a value of something like 0.6. And as you can see, it's kind of now 
It's zero scale during this portion of the turbulence. But as soon as it reaches this threshold, it'll jump up to scale to 0.6 and then jump between this and one. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so if we wanted it to move from zero to one, we could still do that, but at a higher threshold. And again, we can sort of play with scales and everything is nice and procedural. Let's use this setup to control a couple of light parameters. Let's add a quick spherical light and move it above the ground like this. In fact, while I'm here, let's create a ground, create a new null, P for properties, uh, primitive type will be a shape and the shape will be a plane. Let's make it radius of five. There we go. Let's take the light intensity down a little bit. And for further reference, the fork of lightning has a luminosity of 100%, which is why we're seeing it fully lit. This is what we have so far. We can see the sphere called light in the reflection here. So we'll turn the specularity off for that. And then the shadow, we'll turn the shadows off as well. We're going to control the size of this light based on what our master null is doing. And we're going to do that via a very simple expression. Now we could be applying this to any envelope within Lightwave, but using the size is pretty easy to see. So let's use that. Click on our little envelope button. Here's the graph editor. Now what we also need is the Y position of that master. So if we twirl down this little master arrow here and select the position Y, it's just drag it into the channels bin. Here it is there. Let's jump over to the expressions tab and we're gonna create a new one. Let's just call it control. Now value, I'm gonna leave that in there because it's referencing its current value, obviously. So at the end of that, I'm gonna hit an asterisk, which is basically a multiply. Then I'm gonna highlight the master position Y, right mouse click on that and append to expression. Okay, so that automatically updates this field here. If you're typing it fresh, make sure your value has a capital V. That's pretty much all there is to that. So now I'm gonna go back to the spherical light. Hopefully all being well, this apply button should be clickable now. And I'm just gonna click on that. Here we go, as you can see, if we play through now, that uh, size is perfectly in sync with what the master nonce is doing. And if you want a larger size, we'll just take that. And the value is a multiplication of that Y position. And you can also animate this for further custom ability. And what's also nice is you can use that expression over and over. So if we wanted to change the light intensity, again, we'll click on the envelope button. Here's the expression and we simply press apply. And there we go. And you have full control over the intensity that you may need. And then on top of that, what you could also do is add another modifier. So we could, in this case, use the noisy channel. There's the update. Change the scale and speed. And you'd probably want to offset that as well so it didn't go below zero. So you've got another level of wiggle on there, if you like. I thought it would be worth quickly showing how we could do this with nodes. It's basically a fresh scene with a clamped master null as before. And I've removed the constraints on the fork of lightning. Select our master null. So shift G to update that if it hasn't already for you. Now we'll be animating the Y channel. So make sure you click on the position Y. Over to the modifiers tab, add the modifier and we're gonna add the same texture channel. We're going to keep this as default and we're going to hit the texture button. Layer type, we want a procedural texture and procedural type, we want the node, the node editor, there it is. Texture value, we want full effect. So we're going to type in one there and then we're going to edit the nodes. Okay, let's just rearrange this so we can see what's going on in the graph editor. This doesn't need to be complicated. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the turbulence node and we're gonna plug the alpha into the texture value. Now downside to this technique is that you may have to give the graph editor a little nudge in order to update. Probably using these buttons are quicker, but that's just the downside to be aware of. Let's tweak the scale a little bit as we did in the previous example. Okay, so something like that to begin with, perhaps a little more contrast there. 
Now we could use a logic node here to clamp this, but we're going to use a gradient because it's visually easier to read. So I'm going to take the alpha into the input. I'm going to use the color of the gradient. So plug that into the texture value. And because it's black, nothing is happening. So as before, zero is zero, one is one. And we're literally just going to drag that up there and clamp that value there. Perhaps a little lower. So it's interesting that this does update, it's just not updating the graph editor. Okay, so we're going zero to one at this sort of threshold. I think it's important to note, because this threw me off for the longest time, that we're not actually animating in this node editor. This is purely used to draw out a 2D graph, as it were. In the past, I've animated the values in here, and it hasn't updated in the graph editor, and I think, well, it's broken. But that's not the case at all. What's going on in here should not need animating. And while we're here, it would be remiss of me to not to mention the actual clamp node, since it's a clamping tutorial. So what we could do is take the color into there, and we'll use this to make sure we're not going any lower or higher than these values in here. So that's it for our movement on the master null. To vary things up, we're going to animate this fork of lightning in a slightly different way. So select that. We're gonna be using SG Fertilizer to animate along this route. And that requires a weight map. Now, obviously you could do this in Modeler, but I have third powers paint weights, which is great for this. And I've already got one set up as you can see, but just to show you how easy it is, that's the name of my weight map. I don't want any weight on these endpoints, so I'm in Lasso Paint, making sure no depth is ticked. I'm just gonna draw around these, excluding those two points at the top. And that's it. So no animation yet, it's just purely on the master null. So with the lightning selected, let's press P on the keyboard. I'm gonna remove all of these so it's clear what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna type in SG Fertilizer 2. One of my favorite Lightwave plugins. I really wish it was native. Weight map is the one we've just created, which is the fork. We'll click on that little envelope. We need our Y reference of the master now. So let's drag that up there again. Let's create a new expression. Now we just need a straight copy of this. So we don't need the value at all. So let's delete that. Go to our master position Y append to expression back to our lightning progress and press apply. And then that should be that. So in this case, it doesn't matter what our value is set to here because it is just a duplication of what our master null is doing. So now if you wanna tweak our master null, we can just do that and it'll reflect exactly what's going on in here. So there's not much clamping going on there. We're pretty much there with that. Let's just add a bit of extra decoration. We'll turn off SG Fertilizer for a second and add a nodal displacement. Let's create a new null, let's call it displacement. Let's move it off to the side a little bit. And what we'll do is we will rotate it slightly, something like 360 degrees, and let that constantly run. Okay, let's add a turbulence. Take the bump into the input, which will really mess it up. Take the value down a little bit, and then we'll reference object that to the displacement. There we go, 2%, just a little bit of movement there. So just a word of warning, SG Fertilizer can be a little bit flaky sometimes. Turning the weight map off and on again seems to sort it out for the most part. At the end, when you're happy with everything, it's probably worth your while to bake this out. Just a quick one on clamping between values, but keeping the curve shape. We want to do this at the graph editor level, so everything else in Lightwave can point to it, should we need to. And as we saw earlier, OD clamper no longer works. So we're going to have to use an expression here, but it's really simple. We'll jump over to the expressions tab and create a new expression. Let's call it clamp. This is really simple. Under value, let's type all lowercase clamp. 
Now the first value we want as value, which looks at the current value of the keyframes. Let's add a comma and a space. Let's enter the minimum clipping value we want. And then followed by the maximum clipping value we want. And apply it to our position Y. And it's as simple as that. We can change values to suit. And we can use this expression over and over again. As promised earlier, here's why we're animating in the graph editor. Quite simply, keyframes in the graph editor with all its expressions and modifiers are evaluated before the motion options modifiers. So to tie everything together, you really need to animate something that everything in layout has access to. And the lowest common denominator in this case would be the graph editor. So for instance, on our master null here, if we were to add nodal motion, Let's quickly grab a ripples texture as it self animates and put that into the position. So there it is animating away. If we wanted to sync up an envelope to this, we couldn't currently. So here's our spherical light, B for properties. And if we want to sync our light intensity to this movement, let's double click on our master and we'll see we can't actually access the movement of this null at this level. That's because the motion options on this master null is happening after what's going on in the graph editor. But don't worry if you've already spent hours animating your object using the nodal motion, there is a way around it via baking. If you add motion baker here, use the extra channels and let's reference all of these. Let's bring up the graph editor for that. Here's the channels we've just created and we get a sort of a live update. There we go, so we can kind of keep this nodal motion procedural and it have it update automatically, so that might help. So when baked, it's probably worth turning it off. And if you change anything, just click it back on, overwrite keys and just let it play through. But for some reason there must be a bug where the X, Y and Z isn't working here for me. Another nail in the coffin, but who knows, it might work for you. And that is that. See you again soon.